Can we have a chat about home automation? It seems to be, especially after this week in CES and home automation being the big buzzword, but the big buzzword was manufacturers lock in ecosystems, cross connected apps and hubs that might not really work together well with all these different types of devices. Home automation is proliferating at a crazy rate. It is hugely expanding and it is going to cause humongous confusion for consumers. Now, of course, I am standing next to one of the first um, big connected devices to come out. That, of course, is the Nest thermostat, uh, Nest purchased by Google last year, and that started the big consolidation because the consolidation in the industry of home automation is starting like right now, and it's been happening massively for the past well, a whopping one year. Nest acquired by Google, Smart Things acquired by Samsung, and let's see the other one. Oh yes, the, the much promised, much ballyhooed uh, Revolve Hub, bought also by Nest. So, um, what really can you do with home automation? What we've been promised with sci-fi movies maybe not promised, but we've been hoping for some kind of super sci-fi experience, that doesn't always happen in real life, and it doesn't always work in real life. There may be certain situations where it doesn't make sense to talk to your house. If you're sitting on the couch with someone and they're having a conversation with someone else or they're trying to watch TV, you don't want to start yelling at the house or yelling at your phone. So some of these things from movies and TV shows are really plot lines to keep the action going. Uh, and to get the actors to actually say something. In real life, much of home automation is actually controlled by buttons um, and virtual and obviously soft buttons uh, on apps instead of just through voice. Voice has been this huge thing that people want, but in reality, I personally think it's not all that it's cracked up to be. It has its applications, of course. I also realize that a lot of the videos of demos that you see of home automation systems are either put out by uber geeks who want to explain all the code and the wiring and the systems and all the programming behind it and they can't actually get their thoughts across, or B, it's put out by um, manufacturers as either sales pitches and marketing videos or demos that appear to be a demo, but it's actually a sales pitch and they paid someone to put all the stuff in their house and they're saying, oh yes, I love it and it's amazing and it really helps my life when they're really, uh, they're probably gonna rip all the stuff out of there um, right, after the, <laughs> right after the commercial or was shot in someone else's house that they just built yesterday. So anyways, I wanna show you how I use home automation in reality, in my real day-to-day -day life. I wanna show you two killer ways that I use it for true complete automation. And like I said uh, in a previous video, and maybe I said it at the beginning of this video, if automation doesn't actually assist you, if it doesn't actually uncomplicate and make your life simpler, it's not worth having. And that's the bottom line. So everything that I've done with my home automation is to make it work for me. And you ultimately, if you get the home automation devices, whether it's just being um, a couple of simple lights to an entire setup for your entire home to control everything from A to Z, it's gotta help you and it's gotta make sense. If it doesn't, don't do it. So I'm gonna go into more of this in upcoming episodes and show you from my previous location, which was much larger, and compare and contrast from a larger space to a smaller space. We'll get into a lot more of the details. But right now, I want to show you these two ways that I use home automation every single day. Now, you're probably thinking, what are those ways? One of the big things with home automation that you can do is save money by saving energy. That's doing things such as um, leaving your house and your thermostat goes to sort of sleep or away mode. The thermostat's not even turning its display off at this point because I'm moving around and I'm, I'm in its sensor. But unfortunately, the sensor doesn't point in the right direction in this house and I wind up having a problem because it thinks that I am not home when I am. So I ultimately turned that off and I said, how can I best integrate it into my existing away routine that I have built into my uh, home automation system and 
that is also geolocation enabled so that I can come and go from the home and a lot of things will just happen automatically. So let's take a look at my daily routine of coming and going and we will pretend for this demo that it's actually morning and the sun is shining and so forth but for this demo I'm actually going to be leaving and it's dark. So let's assume that uh, I have woken up in the morning, I've done all the normal things, have breakfast, take a shower, all that good stuff, and I'm ready to go to work, get in the car and leave. So instead of fumbling with keys, instead of shutting off lights, I just walk to the door, unlock the door, leave, and close the door behind me. Now you're thinking there must be something else to it, right? Well, no. I'm going to leave, of course, I'm going to go outside, get in the car, and basically just go on my way to the office. Through geolocation and through some secret sauce uh, set up through IFTTT, a web home automation or Internet of Things automation service that connects to my Hue multicolor changing lights from Philips, I'm able to trigger my home automation system to say, hey, I'm not in the area anymore and it means I must have left, whether that's going to work or otherwise. And depending on the time of day, different things may happen. But in general, when I leave, the away mode is going to be triggered, which means all the lights turn off. And because I also have the home automation system hooked into the Nest, the Nest will for sure set itself to away mode because I have told it I am absolutely not here anymore. You may have also noticed that my door does not have a thumb turn for the deadbolt. It has a smart lock instead. This is the August smart lock and I am in the process of testing it and I'll have a review uh, probably in another couple of days. It has some pluses and minuses but so far it's doing its job and it's pretty cool. Uh, after you unlock it, it will wait a certain predetermined time that you set and then it will relock itself. So again, I left and kept my keys in my pocket and the door locked behind me. So like I said, I triggered away mode and there is an indicator on one of these control panels, many of which I have throughout the house, that literally says away mode is on. Now, why is that important? Well, when I'm home, it's probably not really important, but it does give me an indicator that um, away mode is on and I can turn it off if I get back home and for some reason the geolocation stuff doesn't work. Speaking of that, it's time to go home. So I'm finished at the office or wherever I might be. And so depending on the time of year, I might be returning home and it could be light and it could be dark. So let's just say that uh, it is the time of year when it's a little bit darker earlier and uh, sunset has started to happen or it has happened and they're based on a schedule, kind of a randomized time, sometime around sunset. Uh, the away mode will know that, hey, it's time to turn some lights on. And that's also to alert people that maybe someone's home. If there's, you know, someone scoping out the property, they might think, oh, someone's home. Let's not bother uh, breaking into that place. That's the old adage anyways that people like to think of. And so a randomly selected lighting scene comes up along with the patio porch light at around sunset. And so now I'm actually driving home and I re-enter the area and the hue lights, uh, which are internet connected, sense that uh, I have entered the area. They do that through the app on the phone. And again, I'm not pulling the phone out. I'm not doing anything. It's simply understanding where I physically am. I'm coming into the general area of my home and pulling into the driveway and a number of things are going to start happening. So the system will know that I'm coming home and so it's time to cancel away mode and go back to normal mode. And depending on the time of day, it'll either bring lights on or leave lights simply turned off. So as I get into the area, the system is triggered. It says I'm coming home. It's time to leave away mode and away mode shuts off. The sun has already gone down, so it goes into a mode I call everyday general, a general lighting scene that's good for most everyday things that you need to do around the home. In addition, it talks to the Nest and says, hey Nest, it's time to be off of away mode. And so by the time I start walking in the door, 
uh, it'll either be starting to cool down or warm up depending on the time of year. So let's throw the August smart lock into the mix. It also knows that I am in the process of getting home and it's making some preparations for my arrival. Once I get within a certain distance and get in Bluetooth range, it will simply unlock as I approach the door. It does this very reliably, I would say about 98% of the time thus far that I've tested it. So I can simply start walking up to the door, it unlocks for me, and I come into the home. And of course, a number of seconds later, it will lock behind me. So that was probably a lot to take in in a short amount of time, but that's a quick demo of how automation benefits me on a daily basis. Now, the other thing that you may have noticed is that I have these little control panels stationed um, at least by the front door, but there's several more of them throughout the home. And they allow me to see instant status of what is going on, what lights are turned on, what scenes are activated, and I can immediately go up to those and push any of the buttons and have the system respond very quickly. It updates both the system, the app, and obviously the buttons and of course the lights. It's very, very handy and I think it's actually better than having a bunch of touch screens sitting around on walls that you have to thumb through menus and figure out where things are. Uh, it's much more tactile and you can have muscle memory to know which button to push depending on what you need. And lighting and generally when you're trying to control things in your home, you don't want to dig out an app all the time to control something unless you're just really lazy and you don't want to get it from the couch. But if you're already up going up to something like you normally would, you just want to press a button that's physically there and easy to remember. That's how I think it should work anyways. All of the technology that I have running in my home, well, let's just say most of it and the majority that I use every day, lighting scenes and some special sauce with, we'll just call them rules. If something happens here, do something else there. You can accomplish a lot of this with some of these hubs that are out there right now. But according to the reviews, it doesn't necessarily work very well. So will 2015 be truly the year of home automation, smart homes, and allowing us to really connect all these things together? Well, maybe but probably it's gonna be more confusing for consumers as there are so many options and there are so many devices and some of them talk to each other and some don't. Some talk to each other in a two-way communication and some only talk in a one-way communication. The challenge is kind of navigating through all of that. We're gonna do our best to do that here on Lighting Answers in addition to giving you all the other information on new LED lighting options that are out there and giving you some design tips on how to actually put all this stuff together in something that would look pleasing in your home. And if you tie it in with home automation, you can really look at, you can really make it look quite amazing. So I'm gonna close with that. We are gonna go into home automation in depth and in more detail in future episodes. And I look forward to talking to you then. Until then, be sure to support us on Patreon. Be sure to um, help us out there. And uh, if you like the show, uh, you can support it financially. And that helps us out reviewing gadgets and going forward and doing really cool stuff and projects. And of course, you can find us on all the social media things and send us questions at questions at answers.lighting. Otherwise, I am Jody Ganzik, and I'll talk to you next time.